Welcome back to the Homestyle Gourmet Butchers YouTube channel. My name's Jared, and I'm just going to give you a rundown on how to slice some porterhouse, whether it be local like this one or a box meat full one like this. It's going to be all the same, just one will be half the size. So I'm just going to use a full box meat cryvac porterhouse. That, that way you can use that method on whether it be cryvac box meat or a cryvac local porterhouse. After taking it out of its cryvac bag, you just want to pat it dry with either paper towel, a bit of cheesecloth, a rag, face washer, whatever you need to use. It doesn't really matter as long as you get that excess blood off it just so that it doesn't slip and slide around and doesn't make as much mess. Ensure that you actually clean your workbench down, whether it be a chopping board or a workbench like I've got. It'll just keep the meat stable and won't slide as much. Okay, so we just want to go over the underneath of the bottom of the porterhouse here, just to make sure that there's no little bone fragments that's been left on during the boning process, which can do sometimes by accident. I find the best way to find those little bone fragments is just run your fingers. They will stick out like a sore thumb. When your finger finds those little fragments, you'll be able to then nick them off and get rid of them. So once you've got rid of those bone fragments, you can then move on to taking off any excess fat, sinew or bark that's left on from the actual rib bones, just to get rid of it so when you do bite into your porterhouse when it's cooked, you don't have anything chewy. Once I've done there, I'll just give it another once over with my fingers just to make sure I haven't missed any little rib bones or any little bit of bone that's left on. Okay, so now we can flip it back over. You know, I like to slice it from right to left, which you can do it left to right, right to left, whatever's easier for you, and that will also depend on whether you're left or right-handed. Me personally, I do prefer to start from the right. I just find that my left hand can sort of keep the meat stable as I slice. Now with this first cut, if you're doing it at home, you could choose to not take a face cut and just cut a bigger steak or a roast. I will be cutting this for the window, so I'll take a face cut off. That will get trimmed out for sausages and mince trim, and then I'll proceed to cut the steaks to whatever desired thickness I need. If you're refilling the tray in the window, you may not need to slice the whole porterhouse out. You might only need to take four or five steaks and then back the rest up for a later date. Now I will be slicing the whole porterhouse out as I do need the whole thing. Now right about here at this halfway mark, you can start to cut those thin like a sandwich steak if you did wish to get the most out of your porterhouse and have some steaks and some sandwich steaks. Now would be the opportune time to start slicing sandwich steaks. So I'm just going to take a little face cut off the other end here just so I get a nice square end for my porterhouses to end on. Now if you're going to slices at home, you can just always leave that as an actual steak or you can cut it a bit thicker and go a roast again if you wish. Now a good idea for the last three or four steaks, just to make sure that they're all roughly the same, is just maybe mark on the fat and just line it up just to make sure that they are similar thicknesses before you go away and slice it and then end up having one really thick steak. So this face cut here, if you're doing this at home, you just keep that and that would be just a stock standard steak like the rest of them. Alright, so just a rundown on trimming your steak. So I'll be doing these ones for the window, so I'll be trimming them all nice and uniform and nice and neat. Alternatively, if you're doing this at home, you can trim them really heavy and get rid of all the fat. Or if you like the fat, you can leave it on and not touch them at all. It's all going to be a personal preference and any way is correct. So I just recommend taking this little bit of sinew off here. Yeah, even if you are going to leave all the fat on, just nook that corner off and then go from there. Just as you trim it, just try and keep it so it flows nice and even and it's smooth, not jagged. So four steaks here. I've made sure I nooked off that corner. On these first two, I have not trimmed them at all. I've just left them all fat on there just to show that the difference between trimmed up for the window and not trimmed. And it's not really a lot of difference. It's just going to be personal preference whether you like the taste of that fat once you've cooked it. So there's the whole porthouse there sliced out ready to either be cryovac down individually or ziploc bagged and frozen thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe hopefully you can buy a whole porterhouse from your local butcher shop and do this yourself at home